What's up guys? It's been a while, hasn't it? Um, so today we're here to talk about Destiny 2. Uh, this is a game that has been surrounded with a lot of controversy the last four months or something since its release. And last night, for me of course, uh, <laughs> considering time zones, uh, they posted a developer update that was supposed to address a lot of the concerns from the community. And the question is, of course, did they? And most importantly, I'm actually going to... Uh, the, the thing is, the reason I'm even making a video on this, because, you know, considering I don't make a lot of videos anymore, um, I, I kind of feel like a lot of the frustration towards Bungie is sort of over-exaggerated. That's my opinion, but, you know. So, let's get into this. Um, so they start off by saying, you know, um, we used to wait to talk about game updates until we were certain we could meet our deadlines to avoid letting players down. Um, and now they're not doing that. Please keep in mind that the further we out we make our promises, the more they are subject to change. All right. So, natural stuff. Um... And this is just a graphic that explains the content and uh, what people can sort of expect. So, from expansions, I think there are a few things here that are noteworthy. Um, expansions is, of course, content that is purchased. It will normally, I don't know, I think they actually say that. Am I wrong? Hmm... Expansions are that typically add a new story destination. Although, yeah, typically is what they said. So not necessarily. Uh, so it adds new campaign and strikes, new destinations, new destination rewards, new raid layer. And I think that this is sort of an, a weird way of expressing um, what they're adding in an expansion. Because usually, um, unless they're going to call the bigger expansion something else... Um, this means that we're not going to get a new raid in an actual expansion, but just raid layers. It could be that the raids sort of come as they are finished within the raid team and just added to the game through in-game events or something of the sorts. I'm not sure, but it's a very interesting note. New Crucible maps, new legendary and exotic gear. In Seasons... Of course, we have the Iron Banner, Faction Rallies, Seasonal Reputation Rewards, and Game Playlists, Seasonal Events, New Features, and Updates. So essentially what they're saying is that the live team does more of a maintenance and uh, event sort of thing than actual, you know, uh, new content in that sense. Uh, and then they also put something out for Eververse, uh, because that is apparently considered content. And it's customization items, boons, and emotes. All right. Um, available to all players. Yeah, this is the same thing, you know. Uh, it's available to all players. Um, all of the events, as they should be. And that is something that I fully agree with. Uh, faction re uh, rallies return on January 16th, which is in four days. Uh, Iron Banner will be back uh, on January 30th. Okay. Now then, the Eververse. Perhaps the biggest controversy in the entire game. Um, this is based around several different things, essentially. Um, first off, I think it started with the XP controversy. Uh, a lot of people... I also think that there are underlying factors, but let's get to those afterwards. Uh, it started with the XP rates, uh, which they're actually uh, talking about down here. But uh, people noticed that uh, the numbers that you got, the experience, was sort of inconsistent. So you would get perhaps 4,000 experience for a public event the first time, and then all of a sudden it was 1.5k the next time. So that was kind of weird, and it's proved to be so uh, the case that Bungie had put in place a system that uh, made it so that you would earn um, 
experience at sort of an even rate across the entire game, no matter what kind of uh, activities you were doing. So essentially, as far as I understand, I don't exactly remember what is, but it was some something along the lines of if you were completing strikes, which of course take a little bit longer, um, you would th this modifier that it, it changes how much experience you get goes up. So when you do longer activities, uh, it goes up, and when you do shorter activities like public events, patrols, perhaps uh, whatever it would go down so that if you just spammed uh, shorter activities it wouldn't give you uh, that much experience and so it would sort of halt your progress and your um, you wouldn't be able to abuse the system is essentially what it is so that people wouldn't be able to cheat their way into getting all the cosmetics in the game very quickly um, <clears throat> and this ended up in them actually removing the um, this throttle, so to speak, and I actually don't think that was a good idea. Well, it is a good idea because it did start showing consistent numbers and all that. It makes sense, it does, but now they're essentially, uh, that's a chance, essentially what they're saying down here, I think. Uh, regardless of your preferred activity, right now it's too slow in general, in general and loop sided towards grinding specific activities um, like, yeah so essentially they ended up with a problem they were pr trying to prevent with the system just because people were whining about it uh, so that's actually something that I think was rather natural and I don't understand why there was a controversy around it uh, but you know whatever um, of course the other thing with the Eververse sort of was a controversy um, that's that too much gear was locked behind the Eververse. And this I can sort of agree with. Um, for the most part, I think that the Eververse is uh, just an optional thing, you know. Um, it's bonus cosmetics, if you, if you will. Uh, it's not something that is necessary to pick up. Uh, but sometimes, when it comes to certain things, that's actually when I started reacting a little bit. Not that I care too much, but it was still sort of like, why? Uh, that was when they uh, in introduced several ships um, with lore on them uh, that are connected to certain NPCs or characters within the game. Um, and I sort of was like, uh, why can't we just have that in the normal loot pool? That would be, you know, cool to read up on the lore on these characters. Why are they hidden behind Eververse? Um, or locked away behind Eververse, as people like to call it. And that's one thing that I actually can agree with. But still, even at that point, those things are still just cosmetics. So, I, I, I honestly don't understand the controversy at all. Um, no, actually I do. There, there's one, th one more thing. It's the amount of things that are locked behind Eververse. It's... Um, I think someone pointed out that it was like 60% of the shaders are behind Eververse or something like that. I don't know, something like that. And um, I yeah, that that is kind of messed up, you know. Uh, too much content ended up behind Eververse. That that is one thing I can agree with. Uh, all right. So what are they doing with Eververse? Um, we recognize that the scales are tipped too far towards tests at the moment, and Eververse was never intended to be a substitute for endgame content and rewards. Right. That's what I was going to talk about as well. The reason I think that it is sort of an underlying factor for this is that people play the game, realize that Destiny Two lacks endgame. It does. That that's not that, that that's not a secret. It's not a you know something that you really have to argue about. It, it does lack significant endgame content. And so people started to think that the Eververse was a, a substitute for that. It never was. It, the thing is, I, I think that as well, uh, people have a problem with taking breaks from a game. I mean, I when, when the game first came out, I played a whole lot. I, I love the game. I still think it's a pretty good game, but... Um, there's not that much to do, but with that said, I think I got like 10 days of playtime out of it, and then I was like, um, 
I, I, I have nothing left to do. So I, I'm just going to put the game down and start playing some other games. And that's, uh, and that's fine. I mean, eventually, I know that Bungie are going to update the game. They always do. So uh, at that point, I was just like, okay, I'll return to it later when, you know, new DLCs, new uh, updates to the game that make it interesting to play beyond w what is currently available. Um, so that's no problem for me. It's just like, okay, I'll take a break and I'll come back later when they've added more. Uh, people don't seem to think that way about the game, it seems. <laughs> um, people seem to be in a rush to have fun forever, which is kind of a weird statement, but yeah. Um, it's about as weird as I feel that it is when people say, too little, too late, or something like that. Where are you going? Are you going to die by the end of the year? Is that your plan? Why Why can't you return later? Uh, either way, so... Um, we're shifting the balance of new content in favor of activity rewards over Bright Engrams. This includes adding ghosts, sparrows and ships to date found only in Bright Engrams to achievement reward pools. Achievement reward pools. Yeah, okay. So essentially, I think... The way that you're supposed to interpret this is like milestones sort of thing, perhaps. Um, it's sort of an achievement, I suppose. I mean, uh, the way I, the way I interpret this is bigger things. When you you are in complete perhaps the raid or something, you'll get something. Um, we'll provide a gameplay path to earn bright engrams and all contained rewards, including event engrams. All right. Uh, this is the including event engrams. They're kind of already doing this. We'll give more. Uh, we'll give players more direct purchase options and make adjustments to bright engrams to allow players to get the items they want more often. Seems similar to Destiny One, where you could actually just buy silver and then buy that direct item that you wanted. Uh, I actually did that once or twice. No, I only think I bought silver ones, and then I bought a sparrow and an emote that we had sort of in our clan. <laughs> yeah. So, we've begun implementing these changes for Crimson Days event beginning February 13th. So we're already going to get a taste of this pretty soon. Uh, with even more changes on the way in Season 3. Completing Nightfall, Raid, and Crimson Days milestones dur during Crimson Days will reward you an exclusive legendary emote, weapon skin, and exotic sparrow, respectively. Nightfall, legendary emote, raid, weapon skin, Crimson Days, exotic sparrow. Alright. That's the way I read it, anyway. Players will earn double engrams at level up. This is actually something that people were complaining about. Even a friend of mine were com was complaining about this. Uh, Crimson Engrams can also drop from completing the Crimson Days match and from completing the Crimson Days milestone on each character. This is also better than, for example, Dawning. That's actually what I was pointing out here with the double Engram thing when you level up for the duration of the event. That was something that was missing in the Dawning. You still got just bright Engrams or illuminated Engrams, as, as it were. <coughs> Each crim Crimson Engram is very strongly weighted to new rewards when decrypted until all new event items have been obtained. Strongly weighted. That doesn't mean that uh, you will always get new rewards. It means that uh, you will most likely get it. Just want to point that out in case someone actually thinks that, hey, you know what, we're always going to get something unique and new that we don't have. So, XP rates. We're still investigating changes to XP experience rates. Uh, our goal with any update to experience is our transparency and consistent XP gain, regardless of your preferred activity. Right now it's too slow in general and lopsided towards grinding specific activities. And we want to fi fix that without making those activities low value to players who aren't grinding them. Fairness is cool. Our first attempt to, uh, turned out to be unworkably buggy, so we're having to investigate other angles. Okay, so that's the thing. Uh, Apparently, the system was buggy. Alright. Cool. Um, these are There are three releases that we want to put on your radar right now. Later releases will get more specific dates as we, they get closer. This will be available to all players. So, January 30th. 
updates. Masterwork armor. We're expanding the masterwork system to include armor. Masterwork armor provides increased damage reduction while using your super. My first thought to this is, what about... Um, um, wow, Night Stalkers and uh, Void Walkers. Because this is like... <laughs> I don't know. Um, I actually like that helmet. Uh, you can reroll the armor stat type on Masterwork Armor. Armor stat type, yeah. That's, uh, are they referring to like the archetype or th the, the armor stat type? I mean... All right, and similar to masterwork weapons, you can upgrade a piece of armor to, buy, to masterwork by spending. Yeah, all right. Raid reward rework. Raid reward rework. God damn it! So many R's. The triple R's. We're updating raid rewards to make them more unique and interesting. They will now feature mods with raid-specific perks. That is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Uh, and we're adjusting the rewards to ensure a raid item drops from each major encounter. Yeah. The raid vendor will also directly sell Leviathan Eater of Worlds armor and weapons for purchase with raid tokens and legendary shards. Alright. Yeah, sure. Good all around changes, I don't have anything to add. We're all setting a new ghost with raid specific perks that has a chance to drop from the Leviathan Eater of Worlds final encounters. We intend to return to creating more raid and other activity unique rewards in the future. Good. It's really good. Um, February updates. Doesn't specify a date. Strike scoring and high score tracking. Strike scoring is coming to nightfall and replacing the current time limit mechanic. Aw. Kind of sad about that. Um, I don't know. I, I think that the time limit was something that made the nightfalls more enjoyable to me. Uh, but I have seen a lot of complaints about it. The scoring is similar to the Destiny 1 system, but with adjustments to emphasize competitive execution of strike objectives and support for player selectable score modifiers. Ooh. Ooh, that is actually really cool. You can set up your own Nightfall. Wow, that is awesome. Um, in February, Nightfall high scores will be exposed in game via new emblems and will unlock rewards. We also have plans for clan and community high scores in the works. Really good. I th This is fantastic. That is amazing. It's better than the Nightfalls in uh, Destiny 1. Far a lot better. Uh, so, uh, mods 2.0. Uh, this is very much needed. <laughs> work is underway on a full rework of armor and weapon mods. This will focus on reducing redundant mods, more unique theming, and greatly increasing their impact on your power. I hope, uh, since they're not spelling power with the uh, capital P, I hope that they're referring to our general power, not the power that we increase in as we go up and um, get, uh, get more higher gear, so to speak. Um, but actual uh, making the player feel more powerful is what I think they're referring to. We're aiming for a February re release, but with the scope of our, of the rework, but the scope of the rework could push parts of it or all of it out to early uh, early spring. That's all right. I think that they should really take their time with this because this could make a lot of the loot more interesting. Considering they don't have random rolls, at least the mods can sort of improve the customization. We will be evaluating how mods play into the Bright Engram economy as a result because we're sensitive to pay to win outcomes. Alright. Uh, <laughs> quick play improvements. We're adjusting game mode rules to increase the pace of gameplay and power ammo acquisition in gameplay. Increase the pace of gameplay? I think they're essentially talking about making the games shorter, I guess. We're adding texture to the tower for the PC version of the game. Um, yeah, that was already discussed. Whoops. Um, 
exotic repetition reduction. This will prevent players from receiving the same exotic twice in a row. You may still receive duplicates, just not consecutively. Fire team members on destination map. Yay! You will finally be able to see other members of your fire team on the destination map. No more having to ask your fire team where they went when they fast traveled to another landing zone. Cool. In February. Uh, this February update sounds amazing, especially if they manage to uh, crank in the mods. But I don't want them to rush it. I think I saw a very tasty screenshot down here. Alright, we're taking the time we need in development of Expansion 2. That will allow us to react to player feedback from Curse of Osiris. In the coming months, we'll talk to you more about what you can expect to find in Destiny 2's next story. The team is eager to show you what they've been working on. This could mean that they're uh, postponing the release of, this, uh, of the second expansion. We're taking the time we need in development of expansion 2. Alright. Yeah, yeah, that could mean... Independent of Expansion 2, the team will deliver a number of new features that will be released before or during Season 3. Every player of Destiny 2 will receive new content in the following categories. Crucible. I want to give players new reasons to play, more variety and balance improvements. Spring will bring a number of exciting and long-awaited features to the Crucible. Crucible Rank. Beginning with Season 3, we will introduce Seasonal Crucible Ranks. There will be two different ranks for players to pursue. Valor, a progression rank that goes up as you complete matches. Winning helps you move up faster, but there are no loss penalties. Glory, a progression rank that goes up when you win and down when you lose. Performance is how you move up here. All right, so similar to the Dota 2 uh, ranking system. Private matches are coming to all players of Destiny 2. Players will be able to invite their friends to play on the map in mode of their choosing. Um, Alright, let's take a look at this. Maximum lives score to win. Allow resurrection. Seems like you can... Yeah, you can actually customize quite a lot here already. Uh, this sort of looks like lives. Yeah, uh, okay. Right, and this is how many kills it takes. Page 103, I don't know if there are that many maps in the game at the moment. Or if they're actually trying to spoil something. Yeah, alright, that's pretty cool. 66 playlists, oh that is big, that is big. We're bringing 66 PvP to Destiny 2 in addition to the current 4v4 game modes. Oh. I mean, the thing is, I actually like the 4v4. I do. I think it's amazing. It's more focused, much less chaotic and random. Um, but it's also a little bit... Do As a result, it is also a little bit less fun. Uh, depending on what you're aiming for, of course. If I'm playing with four people, which barely ever happens. If I'm playing with four people that actually are competitive, um, I do really like the new 4v4 modes it feels more uh, it feels more like a controlled environment and uh, I prefer it um, easier to get into all right so uh, but but the 66 will definitely bring a bit more of casual fun to the crucible and I think that's definitely what what it needs considering the how popular mayhem was during the dawning uh, speaking of mayhem though we have it it will be returning as a limited time event during Season 3 and going forward. Additional fixes. We're making some changes to make quitting less common and behind the scenes security improvements to imp help improve the overall Crucible experience. Now this is something that sort of has ruined um, Trials of the Nine for me. Uh, with that said, I actually don't have any people that are serious enough about Crucible to... Um, want to play that uh, game mode to begin with. Um, but with that said, um, even if I had, it sort of feels like the experience is ruined by all the reports of people DDoSing each other. Uh, I hope that's what they mean with uh, behind the scenes security improvements, that they're gonna sort of find a solution to that. I know that it ain't easy, considering they went with the network model and sort of gotta stick with it. Um, but that's how I read that out. And of course, 
quitting less common. Yeah, that it happens a lot in competitive games, sadly. Uh, Alright, so... Additional highlights. Weapon and ability pa balance pass. Sandbox adjustments based on player feedback and data from the live game. The sandbox team will share specific changes as we lead up to Season 3. We are halfway through Season 2 at the moment, so I think, you know... I'm definitely looking forward to this because... It, not because I actually find the Crucible to be boring by that sense, in, or in that sense. But I do think that we need a lot of uh, changes to a lot of weapons so that I, I don't really feel like anything needs to be nerfed. Uh, but a lot of things definitely need to be buffed in order to feel viable and have a greater variety of weapons in, in uh, PvP. Uh, it's also going to be interesting to see how mods 2.0 will impact the balance in the Crucible, if it will at all. Who knows what they're doing. Uh, exotic weapon and armor balance pass. Exotic weapons and armor are receiving a comprehensive design pass to ensure they stand out from the rest of the gear and offer new exciting powerful ways to play. <sighs> One of the things that I have as a complaint is sort of like um, the, the Wings of Sacred Dawn, for example. Um, because Wings of Sacred Dawn, as far as I'm concerned, is sort of uh, an exotic that speaks against itself. Because you are way less accurate in the air. And this is apparently something that Bungie wanted it to be like. That, you know, you... Um, it would lower the skill ceiling a little bit and people wouldn't be able to completely smash each other in the cru crucible just because they were levitating on top of each other or something. Verticality, as it's called, is actually um, something that Bungie specifically nerfed. And I hope that they revert that change. You shouldn't make a game easier for the sake of for the sake of losing game design possibilities. I think, personally. That, that's just me. Um, people can just get good. <laughs> um, and I'm, I, I'm saying that as someone who isn't really that good. Seasonal reputation. Specific vendors will now display, display seasonal ranking. Earning reputation will unlock unique seasonal rewards and would reset each season. This is actually something that a fan made a uh, photoshopped image of, and it's amazing that they actually did this. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. It, may, it, make, it will make every season feel very special, because when you start it over, it will feel like you are beginning a new progress towards something that... I don't know, maybe they can move uh, some um, uh, Eververse items in there. Would be a good way to make the season feel, I don't know, interesting, I guess. Um, improved Iron Banner and Faction Rallies. In addition to the changes to we'll see when Iron Banner and Faction Rallies return this month, we will continue iterating on uh, making on these to make them unique, exciting experience that you all look forward to. I think that they will be fine as it is, but, um, you know, having something... The thing is... Um, faction rallies don't really have that many unique ways of playing... It doesn't add any unique ways of playing the game. It, it does make Lost Sectors sort of viable again, and that's cool. Uh, but in general, I feel like... Maybe they should have certain... They should probably make changes to the activities existing in the game to make them more interesting. Uh, that's the way I can see them improving. As for Iron Banner, I don't know how they're going to improve that because it's just a PvP event, essentially. Um, maybe add a, a sort of Iron Banner rank system or something so that people can compete in who achieves the highest score during that iron banner event or something 
Playlist Repetition Reduction. This feature solves the problem of experiencing the same playlist entry multiple times in consecutive or frequent succession for both Crucible and Strikes. So, essentially, you're not going to get Javelin 17 or whatever the hell that map is called uh, five times in a row as I usually get. You're not going to get the same. You're not going to get Arm Stealer three times in a row. Good. I'm sick of it. <laughs> um... We agree with your feedback on the imbalance between achievement and bright endgame rewards. And we will be making adjustments to shift more rewards into specific endgame pursuits instead of generic XP grinding for bright engrams. We're excited to share the details as soon as we have them worked out. Alright. Multi emotes. And this is spring 2018, right? So, uh, so many changes right now that uh, I sort of lost track of where I was. Uh, when multi emote launches, you will be able to choose which emote you have equipped to each of your four emote slots. Uh, vault space. We're targeting an additional 50 slots to vault player vaults. We don't believe just adding more space is a complete solution and are actively working on other changes to reduce load on your vault space. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we don't believe just adding more space is a complete solution. Um, I don't know what kind of limitations they're dealing with. Perhaps it's uh, something similar to, you know, the servers being overloaded if everyone has like a uh, thousand uh, stored items. I don't know. Or maybe they just think they the vaults will get too messy. And items will feel insignificant if you can store however many you like. It's things they will probably never mention, but it's sort of a design thing. Um, we're adding an exotic accessory tab to vault collection, so you will no longer need to spend vault space on exotic ships, sparrows, and ghosts. All right, cool. In addition to the tower chat that is targeted for February, we're adding a clan chat to the PC version of the game. I was kind of hoping for something similar for consoles where you at least can send like a message of the week through through the clan system, but all right. Uh, Heroic Strike changes will be introducing modifiers to add more ga gameplay variety to the experience. Uh, I think they said, I mean, we'll be introducing modifiers. We already have modifiers, for example, the Nightfall. Um, And this should mean that they're adding new modifiers to the game, uh, similar to those of Destiny 1, most likely. Fall 2018, or sooner, they're detailing, uh, we're actually nearly at the end of it. Um, they're detailing very far, far ahead. <laughs> so these are the things that they are less sure about the time scope, uh, because it is more subject to change, it's farther off in their planning. We're working on a lot more that we're not quite ready to discuss. Expect more on this small sample of items in the future. Uh, item collection and records. This is interesting. Uh, because I think it was like, uh, I don't know if it was a leaked screenshot or... No, 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 wait. It was actually during during the Destiny 2 presentation. Uh, it was like a one or two hour thing where they talked about how the entire game is changing from the first one. Um, and they flew people out and all that. Uh, there was a gameplay gameplay footage and, and I screenshotted it and I was like, what can I uh, sort of <laughs> glean from this? And I was like, oh, there's a tab in the top of, of your character screen called records. And I was like, well, what can that be? Uh, so the first thing, I had two theories at that point. That was before Destiny 2 even released. Um, that was that, number one, I thought that it could have something to do with um, what we had done previously. And uh, something that would make Destiny 1 veterans feel appreciated. Because records, right? It, it shows what we have done. Um, so I thought that it could have something to do with that. But apparently it didn't because 
Uh, well, it could still, but, but it's way less likely now because they introduced the legacy feature, which sort of shows when you completed different activities throughout the base, uh, throughout the, the Destiny 1 experience. Um, so records, I think, is similar to record books in Destiny 1. Uh, and it, but instead of being an actual book, it's going to be things you can complete and achieve rewards from. Uh, or attain rewards from uh, in a tab in your start menu. That That is what I actually think it is. Item collections is probably going to be like kiosks, I would imagine. Uh, and that's good. It's very good. I like those in Destiny 1. It's made sure that um, we didn't need all that vault space. And that is a sort of a long-term solution for the issue. Weapon slot and archetype improvements. This is very much needed. Um, it's not. There's not much to say about this. It's a bit sad that it's coming so late, but they have a lot of things to, on their plate, so I can understand that this sort of has a lower, um, lower priority. Uh, although they are sort of already doing a bit of this since uh, during season three. As it were, they pointed out that the sandbox was going to change a little bit. Uh, additional crucible playlist, e.g., Rumble. All right, this is actually coming way later than expected. Fall 2018. This is already in the game files on the PC. Someone data mined the game and found files on Rumble. People even thought that it was going to be part of the Crimson Days event. Better clan rewards. I, yeah, it's really good that they're doing this. Uh, I just really hope that uh, it's something worth getting. Um, there should be more incentives to make your clan want to play together, you know. Masterwork Exotics, and this one is... Wow. Um, <laughs> I don't know what I think about that. <laughs> I think that sort of leveling the playfield is the fact that... Uh, I mean, Masterwork Exotics... To me, I don't think that these are going to be doing anything differently from the Masterwork Armor and Masterwork Weapons. that uh, Legendaries, of course. Um, because that would make them too, too powerful. Although, of course, you can only equip one uh, per character. Uh, or one uh, for weapons and one for armor. I mean. Uh, so maybe they could actually go with something different, but I don't think they will. Uh, by not... I was sort of expecting them to never go down the route of doing Masterwork Exotics because it sort of levels the playfield between uh, Legendaries and Exotics. But uh, yeah, I, I guess they went with it. Uh, pinnacle Weapon and Gear Improvements. Uh, yeah, so I think this means new perks and stuff, essentially. Trials of the Nine Improvements. Don't know what they're going to do with that. I haven't invested much time in the mode myself. Um, I think this might work. Eventually start becoming like an uber ranked or a hardcore uh, player scene for the PvP community. Shaders and dismantling. In fall 2018 or sooner. Or sooner within a <laughs> parenthesis. And I, I don't even know. Uh, I think this should be in the or sooner part. I mean, shaders and dismantling. This is actually something that a lot of players have issues with the shaders as they are currently implemented in the game. And uh, considering how Destiny 1 players felt about the transition between the Destiny, 2, uh, Destiny 1 shaders to Destiny 2 shaders, I feel that this would at least alleviate some of the pains of having to deal with them. Um, I actually don't mind the shaders myself, but it's a little bit annoying to have to dismantle one at a time. That, I, I do care about that, but I don't think the shaders are bad in Destiny 2 personally. I do think it's stupid, as my friend pointed out, um, that it actually costs that much, that much glimmer to apply them. I think that even perhaps it would be a good idea to make shaders slightly less common. Even the common ones. Um, 
simply because it will not fill your inventory with that much crap that quickly. Uh, the future of guided games. Um, all right, I don't have much to say about this. I haven't tried guided games. Uh, people have said that this is a failure. I don't know why. I haven't actually read those posts. I'm not that interested. So I I can't really voice my opinion on this. And uh, furthermore, here we have something that is very important. And the thing is, I think that this should be addressed before. Um, before uh, this is actually a PvP thing. They're not saying address Crucible solo versus fire team matchmaking, but I'm pretty sure that this has to do with the Crucible. And this is very important to do, especially with the ranked Crucible coming. Because people are going to feel like the game is so unfair if they end up in a game where there are three parties. One of two people, one of one, one of one. Another one of one. Uh, so two, one, one against a full four-man squad. If this happens... Um, the ranked system is going to feel extremely uh, uneven and unfair. So I think this should be a high priority for the Crucible team. Uh, one final note. Expect to hear more from us via, via Bungie.net, Twitch and social media. We'll be talking to you more directly and more often, as promised. We want to thank our community for all the passionate and detailed feedback you provide. It's critical to our ability to, con to continually improve Destiny, so thank you. Talk to, talk to you soon. All right. That was that. And um, I feel a little bit overwhelmed, personally. I know that the community's response has been very varied. I think that a lot of people don't really understand how long it takes to work on all of these different changes. Um, you have to understand that all of this this insane amount of uh, changes is coming along with a potential expansion to N3. I don't know if there will be an expansion 3 this year, considering if they're pushing back to expansion 2. But, you know, um, in general, I think that Destiny 2 is going to be a pretty amazing game when, for example, what they call year two starts. Um, a lot of this people have been arguing is um, should have been in the base game. And I understand that um, sentiment, I do. Um, there is a lot of complaints about this game in general and I understand them, most of them at least. Um, I do think that a lot of them are a bit irrational or harsh but in general i understand the frustration of having to go back to a game that seems much more like something that we started with but i think this is quite different essentially what they're bringing back here is uh, they're bringing back a lot of the stuff that was in destiny one but they're doing it over a year instead of over three years and um Along with that, a lot of things that weren't in Destiny 1, like ranked PvP, uh, raid layers, of course, um, masterworks, mods, I, 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 and, and the different nightfalls, I, I don't know, clans. All this stuff um, feels like Destiny 2 could be a pretty amazing game by the end of 2018. And for those of you that really do feel like... Um, this, these changes aren't happening soon enough and you want more from the base game. That uh, argument is valid because of the fact that Destiny 2 was rebooted about 1.5 years before release. Although I think that was a pretty stupid move on Bungie's behalf considering how the backlash that Destiny 1 got when it released. Um, I also understand the decision because back when that actually leaked the first time. Uh, well, it was just like a rumor back then, but Bungie themselves have confirmed it at this point. Um, back when that leaked, 
they also pointed out the fact that the reason it uh, it rebooted was because um, the the game that Destiny Two was back then was too similar to an expansion, uh, and they wanted to make it more unique from the first game. So what you would have gotten is essentially Destiny One Point Five. Uh, I think if they had just kept going with it, perhaps that would have been fine. I don't know. Um, but generally, I think they wanted to fix some of the bigger issues with Destiny and make it, um, I don't know. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to go into all of that stuff because it's generally just speculation. But that's just my two cents. You know, I think this is an amazing update. Uh, I can't wait for all of this to end up in the game. I'm probably going to be playing a lot of Destiny 2 during 2018 for sure. Um, and I'm glad they are addressing it. I really hope that they come through on all, all of these promises and um, and that they you know keep delivering on the communication part as well I feel like there was something else that I was uh, planning to say but <laughs> I sort of forgot about it alright so either way um, I hope you all enjoyed going through all of this it's a lot of great stuff um, and I hope that you all have a good time. And as Bungie, or Deej at least, would say, be excellent to each other. Alright? Bye.